Hey guys, how's it going? Miso here, back with another Epic 7 video. And today we are going to be covering a new unit. Well, not a new unit, a newly buffed unit. Kind of recently buffed, Crimson Armin. And kind of show off some other, you know, a little bit of May Chloe as well. But Crimson Armin, she recently got like a buff, balance buff. And as a result, well, not just as a result of that, but that and a couple other factors people are using her a ton in World Arena and RTA. And she just kind of came in out of nowhere. And I was personally wondering why people are using her, right? And some of you guys are probably wondering that as well. Like if I'm gonna use, like the one thing, that two things she got buffed, right? She got her S2 buffed to where it's no longer an adamant shield effect to where it reduces damage off of crits. It's just damage in general. And the other buff was that her S1 is a 100% chance to provoke now. And you're thinking, probably thinking the same that I was thinking, which was, if that's the case with 100% provoke, and the, the 15, like the damage reduction was always a case with like um, green armament, right? And it's not like anybody used her. Um, so it's like, why are people all of a sudden using Crimson Armin when FCC is still just as strong, right? She didn't get nerf she didn't get touch she didn't change and her barrier is really strong she provides her s3 and she does have a hundred percent chance for vote just like crimson armin does why are people using crimson armin well here's the thing crimson armin gives you a lot a lot of coverage and that's one of the reasons why people are picking her so much so s3 gives immunity and invincibility to protect your units, right? So I have her speed tuned to be 171 to be a bit slower than everybody else so that they can all take a turn. Then she comes in and protects them. So she gives them immunity and invincibility. And after she gets invincibility, people can't do anything. Their DPS come in, they can't do damage. They can't do anything until your turn. So you just take a turn again, right? She has, of course, the damage reduction. So that's Aureus plus adamant basically a stronger adamant because it is all sources of damage aureus plus adamant in one unit and immunity and invincibility this unit just gives you a ton of coverage and on top of that what you get is this imprint release of effect resist right so that's 12.6 effect resist that's not that much but now you combine it with made chloe's effect resist let's say you have 14 you have it maxed right but we'll, we'll go with mine right 12 so 12.6 12 plus 12 24 percent plus another 20 from this so that's 46 percent no 44 percent right 44 percent and then you get the effect from what is it s2 effect resist 20 percent s2 so that's 64 percent total off of all imprints and now if you throw in landy in there because landy and carrot combination is extremely powerful and you have her max imprinted right that's an extra 70 17 percent so that's like 74 percent effect resist off of doing nothing you literally just have imprints and your units have so much effect resist that units without effectiveness are not going to debuff you and units that have effectiveness, right? Let's say they're building like 100% effectiveness or 150% effectiveness. It's a much lower chance of affecting you. So that's kind of crazy, right? And then you have Maid Chloe, who I, mine is kind of like not great. My effectiveness is only 161. But if I had her built better, I'd put her at like 180, 200% effectiveness. I'm getting like almost like 260 270 effect resist just off of like the gear and the imprints alone which is really nutty if you think about it and let's say you're picking um carrot right with your comp and a lot of people pick water kisei against carrot so what they'll do is they'll use water kisei's s3 to hit her and reset her s um, her s3 and and strip her immunity, right? But if you have all those pieces combined with the Landy, with the um, Maid Chloe, with the Crimson Armin all together, she's one going to take so little damage because she herself is tanky, usually built. And then you have the Aureus from your Carmen 
and you have um actually i don't know if that effect stacks the the adamant shield effect that she has plus the make uh, the the crimson arm one i'm assuming it doesn't but either way, like that is just like you're getting super, super tanky, right? And you have super high effect resist, which is really nutty. Kisei's don't build effectiveness. As a result, you're probably not going to get reset. Um, in the videos you're about to see, I do get reset because my, again, I don't have that last piece, the landy piece. But again, it's still a lot lower chance of getting reset as a result. That person probably got lucky, or they're one of those weird ones that built effectiveness, and as a result, they just don't do enough damage. But yeah, so that's really the reason why so many people are picking Crimson Armin, just because there's so much coverage that she provides, and you combine her with Maid Chloe, with a ton of heals, revives, attack buff for offense, and you got the defense from her, it's just kind of like an unbeatable comp almost. And let's say that, you know, it saves you against Basar as well because your mate Chloe um, has the cleanse. It's just a very, very, very flexible and versatile build, like unit and build and kind of team comp as a result. You're not always going to get it, of course, but when you do, it really, really works, as you'll see in the couple of videos, uh, in the couple clips following. Oh, yeah. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and uh, here are the rest of the clips. Should you know what? No, we'll pick the RB, I think. I'll be your opponent. I'll show you what I've got. Everything disappears. Okay, Ron. That's a weird pick. I'm gonna pick the SSB here. No. Bring it on. And then we ban the Let's see. I think we ban that girl. I don't know if I have enough damage to break through her stuff is the problem. So here's the thing. So here's what I want to talk about. So here's the reason why you pick Maid Chloe. Into kind of like a draft like this where you're picking Carrot and they have like a Kisei and they have like a Cerise. Like their Cerise might not be built super high effect for, uh, effectiveness. So that could be helpful. Oh, well, that kind of throws things out the window. But we can still, what we can do is we can still imprint release her, right? Give her a little bit of extra F res so that she could at least have a higher chance of um, resisting everything. And we'll see how this goes. Because the thing is, she's going to want to open up S3 onto your um, carrot, people. right? This can't be helped. This is going to hurt. Nice MLDB. So no see, look at that. That didn't even hit her. It, it only landed one of each debuff onto her, these two. Like... That's kind of one of the powers of this C Armin thing, giving everybody effect resist. And imagine if I had that for um, both the um, the the Maid Chloe as well, and then giving the entire team effect res like that. Symbol of unity, interesting. So here we go. We're going to go and use her S3. Unfortunately, I am attacked down, which kind of sucks. But now what we can do is we could give everybody immunity or uh, invincibility, and now their two DPSs can't do anything. Oh wait, well the speed speed tuning here is a little bit bad, but um, if my team were speed tuned correctly, I would be able to. Um, be able to have her not be. Or like have her be in, uh, in, uh, in vulnerability, but unfortunately my speed is my team is not speed tuned that well. So now she, this is a precarious situation, right? Because he wants to use Kron's S3 to kill her, but she can't. So now she has to use her S2 or S1 onto a unit that doesn't matter. And she can't. Um, yo, thanks for the um, for the sub, Mish. Oh wow, that did like nothing. Oh well, now she's gotta she's gotta use it anyways. 
So now the K-Ron is kind of screwed because he goes before the RB, right? And as a result, he can't do anything. He, his And he just concedes. So that's one of the powers of having this Crimson Arm in here. It's just that invulner like immu uh, invulnerability that she gives. It just screws with a lot of comps and lineups. Now, if my my comp and lineup was a little bit better speed tuned, my SSB would have gone before the Crimson Armin, and then she could have gotten the protection from that as well. But because it isn't, that kind of screwed up my uh, <laughs> my plan. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of what happened there. So we'll continue doing that with um, this lineup. Oh wow, that's an interesting ban. Um, I think we're gonna go with the carrot here again. You'll regret this. <sighs> Maybe I'm working too hard. Falconer Clurry if you're ready, into the crowd. So now we pick the made Chloe because she's definitely a higher tier like people consider a higher tier pick than the um, than the Crimson Armin so I don't think that she will be picked here so she's gonna pick that for some odd reason but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go with our plan continue go with our plan we're gonna go pick Crimson Armin and then I might want to pick one more defense unit here I could either pick I think I'm gonna pick a Ruel here the double revive comp um, should be pretty good Glory be with us. the one problem is is ML haste now so he's going with the Arby which is a weird pick I'm gonna take out the Falcon or Clurry because even though my team is pretty good against that, uh, actually, should I pick up the, get rid of the cigarette? Both are kind of annoying in their own way. I'm gonna pick this. I'm gonna ban that. So she's gonna ban the Landy, which is fine. So I'm gonna again have the inf print. Do I need a release? I don't need the release because on her, I'm just going to put the defense up on her because there's already the um, effect resist um, that I'm like, I, there's no really need for effect resist, right? In this comp, I got the Shimadras, I got the, you know, everything basically. <laughs> and they have no real debuffs. So that's kind of like another one of the flexibilities of this. Like, if you don't need the release, then. You know, that's fine. Actually, I should, probably should have uh, concentrated made Chloe as well. Data analysis complete. Now disappear. All right, let's do this. Don't take your eyes off me. So who's she gonna try to blow up? Is my question. I don't think she can blow up anybody. Is the problem. See, look at that. And now she's gonna try, she's gonna kill the carrot, right? But that's fine because I have revives up the wazoo. Dark blade. Well, so, here, what we're gonna do is we are going to revive her. And it's, this person's kind of screwed because they don't have any sustain. I have a ton of sustain. And revives. And he's just like, what do I do? So he's just going to put up defense buff is what I'm assuming. Yep. But that's probably going to get stripped. Well, then again, he does have like other stuff as well. So I might, might have been able to hold on to that. But at the same time, I do want to give my carrot attack buff, right? So, I think that um, that cigarette is done. That cigarette is probably dead. Oh wow, that landed nothing! Holy, 
Um, do I want a soul burn here? I don't think I need it. Trust me. So now they can't do anything. It's like, well, now they got two turns of DPS that just do absolutely nothing. I'll be your opponent. I'm not so do I need to heal anybody? I don't think so because I have the revive and I have my mate Chloe coming up. So she's going to hit try to hit her. Yep, oh, and my people are tanky. So I'm gonna do this one because when the RB goes, he's dead anyways. And she's dead. And I'm gonna do a provoke there. So he's dead. But that's fine. We have Im we have. Uh, what we got? Uh, the 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 thingy, the thingy with Jiggy. We have uh immunity. There we go on all my targets, so nobody's gonna get blinded. And then now I can just soul burn S one for heals, and they can't really do anything. Again, I still have my revive buff, so this crowd can't horse anybody. And I don't think he's killing anybody either. And that's just the conceit. So again, like we just we're just covered with so many things with this lineup and draft. Like it's kind of crazy. We'll do one more just to kind of uh, I guess uh, put the nail in the coffin or whatever you call it drive it home. So we're going to go for the carrot again, because carrot really is kind of the Shall premium pick. My theory? <laughs> so they're going to go General Purgus. And who else? Both the Golden Boys are banned. Tea time. Up? So we're going to pick... Again, we're gonna do the Maid Chloe and the Crimson Armin. <laughs> An eternal night will reign. Now, this is a little bit less, um, I guess, how do you put it? Secure this time? Um, because the... I only have these two imprints, right? I don't have, like, for example, the third imprint of Vectors with Landy, which would be nice. But I'm still gonna go for that pick. We're gonna go for the Landy, sorry. Landy. And then who, what would I try to pick up last? So if they ban her, it's fine. Again, I think I'm just going to go with the Ruel again. Like, they have a lot of just like, I'm going to blow you up. And with Ruel, it's just kind of like, it doesn't matter, right? May the light guide us. And I'm confident that with like Shimadras and like all that stuff. So, let's see. So he picks the Champ Z, which doesn't really matter to me too much because yeah it bounces back that but like it's not that bad to be honest so who am i gonna ban here i'm gonna try to let the tea time through i'm gonna ban the cheap perg so he's gonna ban the landy again so we have we're gonna release this imprint and then i think she already has a release so we're good there so she's got a good bit of effect res right now. Everybody has like a really good amount of effect res. So the only one that's kind of threatened um, getting stripped or um, getting a buffable is Landy, but that's not bad. Yo, what's up Landon? <laughs> I keep saying your name, uh, Landy. Well, there's a character named Landy in this game. 
It's a unit. Okay, so she he's gonna S3 here, but I'm I think I'm gonna resist. Ah, just resisted one. Okay. Yeah, I, I, if I wanted to fully resist it at that, I really needed to have like the landy on my team with the imprint release, but I don't really have that right now. Uh, damn. Well, my uh, what should I call it? My Ruel, unfortunately. Well, my things, unfortunately, don't really have super high Fres. That's one of the problems. So I'm just gonna do this. Nice burns. So that's why I'm not afraid of the Champ Z, right? Because the Champ Z is not going to have that high effectiveness to where... Um, let's see here. I'm just going to do it on her. And then we're going to do this on everybody, except for Maid Chloe, unfortunately. Well, that's fine. So this protects my carrot. An eternal night will rain. So she has to go on the S one on the mate, Chloe, which is fine. We can always revive her. That's stunned. Will you join me for a tea party? The shards of moonlight will fall. Again, she just doesn't do enough damage to really be able to beat through her, right? And then now she's up, and she gets heals, and then she gets to put on the revive buff. So I'm really not worried about her at all dying. Glory be with us. Um, honestly, so that girl's probably... Uh, I'm gonna put this to seal the deal. Okay, we're just gonna do that. And we're going to provoke her. Perfect. It's time to find an answer. And does she need detonates? I don't think so, because that's, that's probably just going to happen on its own. So, but whatever. We'll, we'll just detonate it. Yeah. You who do know the terrors of the so she has gabbed here, which is kind of annoying. But we got revive. So we're fine there. I'll show you my power. And yeah, this is just a really straightforward fight from here on out. Let's just bop her. Mm, let's continue to bop her. We're not really, again, we're not threatened by the Champ Z at all. So she didn't gab this time, so that's good. Unfortunately, she's going to reset her here again. Yep. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So we'll just go on her. But she's dead. Perfect. And I mean, from here on out, it's just really easy. We we can't lose. We have so much sustain, so much damage, so much everything. So there we go. Easy. So there you go, guys. Those were the RTA clips. Hopefully you guys saw the power of this unit. You definitely like, it's not a DPS unit, right? So you're not going to see the power like just right there, but it's really, really strong. Trust me. So here are the stats of my Crimson Armin. She's 171 speed again. You want her to be pretty slow to come after your units. Um, she's got 100% effect resistance, so just give her a little more of that effect res to resist some of the um, units that don't build all that much effect resist. And you, of course, you have your stacking effect resist with like Maid Chloe and stuff. So she's got a ton of effect resist just you know, right off the bat. So you want to build her really tanky. I have her 22k HP. Uh, 1900 or 2000 defense and she gets more when I imprint concentrator right um, built tanky built slowish but not like a turtle because um, you do want her to take a turn and then my carrot is not like crazy she's on counter as well which makes it so that if I want to build my crimson armor a little faster that's probably not going to happen and there's also a little bit of RNG here with her being 177 speed so if I were a normal person not using her for some dumbass comp in guild war i would put her on a little you know a little bit faster speed maybe like 190 200 speed um to like come right after my mate chloe right so 190 ish speed build her bulky high damage um she doesn't need a ton of effectiveness but with the kind of the meta going on right now with like of course like effect resist units 
um, and effectiveness being more powerful, I might want to boost her effectiveness a little bit higher. Um, but there's that. And then I also have my Maid Chloe, which again is kind of scuffed. She's using like level 75 gear, 78 gear. I don't have her on great gear. She was just kind of built like last minute. But again, build her tanky, build her fast, um, decently fast, and uh, build her high F res as high as you can. And then my Landy is also not great. She's Bruiser Landy, built kind of tanky. I wish she was tankier, but yeah. Around 200 speed, 3.2k attack, 260 crit damage, 95% crit. Just bruisery all over, all around. I wish I had a higher level Guiding Light, but whatever. And of course, build her with immunity. Any unit that doesn't take first turn, if you have immunity on them, you can never go wrong with it. Um, but yeah, those are my units, and that's the video, I guess. Hopefully, you all enjoyed. Remember, hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, hit the bell all that stuff, comment down below on what you want to see next. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.